hello and welcome to this novena. We're now on the eighth day and we're coming to the end pretty soon, three more days actually, and we are celebrating the martyrs of the Quiche of Guatemala. I'm the Reverend Emily Smith. I'm the parish priest of the Church St. Barnabas in Westminster, Canada, and I'm also the co-president of the Oscar Romero Sixal Network. We've been remembering today, uh, these days, the men and the women, the old people, the young people, and even the children of Guatemala, especially of the Quiche, who were killed during the Guatemalan genocide. Especially, we are remembering and celebrating the life of 10 martyrs, these martyrs who will be beatified, knowing that there were many more, and that these 10 represent for us the many faithful who lived and died because of their love for you. Today we are celebrating the life of Miguel Chu Imun, who was a catechist in the area of the Canton de, Mon de la Montaña, Parashtut in Sacapulas. We have called him the martyr of non-violence because he said that he would carry a Bible and never a weapon. He lived in the area of the Quiche that suffered great violence during the 1980s, and he himself was killed on the 31st of October of 1991. Now, most of the martyrs and the ones that we have been celebrating so far were killed in the early 1980s, in the 1980 and 1981 um, for the most part. And Miguel was um, lived another 10 years. And it was a very, very difficult time in Quiche, in Guatemala. It was an occupied time. The army had taken over most of the churches and was using the churches as a, as a base for their operations of violence. And Miguel maintained his faith despite the threats, despite the violence that was around him until at, in the end he was killed. And his family tell two really beautiful stories about him and I'd like to share those stories with you today. They say that one night, just a few days before he was killed, they heard some rustling in a cornfield and they woke up, they thought they were pigs and they went out to scare away the pigs and when they came outside, they saw a beautiful star and it had lit up the whole sky. And so they stopped and they knelt and they prayed and they gave thanks for the beauty of God's creation, the beauty that they found while observing this beautiful star. And another night, a few nights before he was killed as well, they say that he was out in his cornfield and the, the, um, the batteries in his, in his uh, flashlight uh, went out. And he was there and it was very, very dark. And he said he, they said he said a small prayer and he saw a light before him and as he got closer, it looked like a small flame and it was leading him to his home. And when he got home, the light disappeared. And so I'd like to say this prayer for our friend Miguel. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life according to your word. Accept the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the life and the example of your servant, Miguel. We thank you for the courage he had 
and the faith he shared in the midst of violence. We pray that our hearts may be filled with your love, that we may live in your world, committed always to this path of nonviolence and peace.